I'm Ian Hanna-Mansing. It's Christmas Eve, but it's like no Christmas Eve in many years. Events in the world have not slowed down for the holiday. Tonight, developments in the two major stories of this incredible past week. More developments in Romania's civil war, but first, the story in Panama. It was one of the most intensive and controversial manhunts in history, and tonight, it's over. Manuel Noriega, the man the United States sent its army to catch the man it put a bounty on, has been found. But he hasn't been captured, and it's not clear whether he will be. That's because Noriega is inside the Vatican Embassy in Panama City. The ousted general apparently drove there earlier today, walked inside, and asked for political asylum. One of the main reasons U.S. troops invaded Panama this week was to capture Noriega and return him to face trial in the United States. But things didn't go as planned. For days, the army simply didn't know where he was. And now that they do, he is still out of reach. The CBC's Tom Kennedy reports. After four and a half days of destruction and killing, peace in Panama has a chance. A few minutes ago, we received a report that Mr. Noriega had presented himself at the papal nunciariat and turned himself in for political asylum. At the Nunciata, chaos. Confusion, too, about what happens next. The French ambassador came and went, but would say only, Merry Christmas. The church confirmed Noriega was there, but said nothing more. The American defense secretary, who arrived this evening, seemed as confused as everyone else. There will clearly be some uh, intensive discussions over the next uh, few days about what his fate, uh, what fate has in store for him. I'm not at liberty tonight uh, to predict how that's going to sort out. I would simply reiterate what I said before. The U.S. military has done its job. They've run him to ground. Now the lawyers and diplomats will have to take over. The church plays a large role in this Christian country. It's played a large role in recent political events, too. When Noriega thugs intimidated, shot, and beat up their patrons' political opponents, the church criticized. When Noriega stole last May's election, the church acknowledged the theft. Today, when three of Noriega's officers wanted to give up, it was a priest who negotiated on their behalf. But it's not a good negotiator Noriega is after, but asylum. David Amada is Noriega's friend and was his advisor. He says Noriega would never give himself up to the Americans alive. He doesn't want to die. He has told that several times. But he has to die, he has to die in complying with his duty. But Noriega does have some options. One of them, surprisingly, came from the new government that replaced him. Washington says it has the right to bring Noriega back to the States to face drug smuggling charges. Earlier today, the new government that is in power because of the U.S. said it may not necessarily bend to American will. Under the Constitution of the Republic of Panama, we may not extradite any Panamanian citizen. So the dictator leaves his fate in the hands of the church whose rules he so brutally flouted. And in the streets tonight, relief. The beginning of a new era in Panama. A Merry Christmas after all. Tom Kennedy, CBC News, Panama. And after Tom Kennedy filed his report, we talked to him about today's sudden developments. And we asked him if the Americans have any idea how they'll proceed to try to get hold of Noriega. No, absolutely none. I don't think they know what they're going to do. It's a tremendous dilemma for them. And it's kind of interesting, actually, because in China, in the American embassy, the Americans have given asylum to a Chinese dissident. And that Chinese dissident is called a, a criminal by the Chinese government. And now we have a situation where a man who the Americans consider a criminal has sought asylum in another embassy, in effect, the embassy of the Catholic Church. It's a real dilemma, and nobody really knows yet how it's going to turn out. As, as a defense secretary said, it's up to the diplomats and the politicians. The news certainly took us by surprise here. Uh, was this a surprise to American forces as well, the surrender to the embassy? An absolute, total, total surprise. Some of the military said they had heard rumors there was something going on. I was down in the town most of the day today, and people were saying that they had heard that General Noriega had planned a Christmas present for the American forces, and we all thought that was going to be some sort of an attack. And then, lo and behold, a couple of hours later, this stunning development, he had actually given himself up. And Noriega aside, what has it been like on the streets of Panama City today? Well, there is still some sniping. It's still fairly dangerous in the streets, but we can get around, unlike a couple of days ago. But what's interesting now, the American military has always tied together the end of the violence and the shooting with the capture of Noriega. Now that Noriega has disappeared, perhaps the fighting will end. But also what's interesting, after Noriega gave himself up, we were going out into the streets to try and get some pictures of the party that's been happening there. And the American military at the gate here, where we are located, 
said that there had been some rumors of some snipers in this area and they would not let us out because there was a password to get back into the base. And if we did not know the password, they would shoot at us. So even after Noriega gave himself up, there was still sort of menace in the air, but we're all hoping that by sunup tomorrow that will be over. Well, Tom Kennedy, thank you very much and, and good luck. Thank you. Until Noriega gave himself up, the search for him was a preoccupation of the American invasion force. The Americans weren't waiting for Noriega to walk into their arms. They were out looking for him. Late tonight, there was some footage from Panama of a raid the U.S. forces made on a villa where they believed Noriega was hiding. Police 12-30, right? I just got a piece of paper. No, I, I told the major going to be a piece of paper. Okay, good. That's fine. Hey, there we go. After days of being just behind the elusive general, the U.S. Army today believed it had been just ahead of him. Armed soldiers were on their way to the target. They weren't going to let anything get in their way, but instead they found an empty room. Noriega wasn't there. This soldier is describing what they found the last time they tried this. They had, uh, two they had five Mercedes in there, two BMWs. They had a Porsche. Uh, you, know, you knew right away you had some because you walked in and they had the, the old Rolexes. I mean, it was just, uh, it went on and on. So. Uh, but we didn't break anything. We were in the house and we came on out. Colonel, there's no doubt in your mind that at noon today, Manuel Noriega was in Panama City at this house. I'm telling you, there's no doubt in my mind to the fact she told she took us down to the sauna weight room. He's right by the fence where he was supposed to jump over and got the helicopter. And we checked on both the houses and they both verified where it landed and it would have been right over the wall. We even saw a wall mark. So I'm just telling you, I'm, he is in the area. In Washington tonight, George Bush was said by his press secretary to be gratified by Noriega's surrender. But as time goes on, Bush may run into more and more political trouble over the invasion. What was supposed to be a surgical strike and then a little mopping up may turn into an occupation that goes on longer than anyone wanted. Anna Maria Tremonti reports. While President Bush arrived at the Pentagon for a briefing and to phone the troops, a few of his officials were busy offering further explanations to justify sending thousands of soldiers into Panama. Secretary of State James Baker defended the action and then criticized the organization of American states. Criticism in the aftermath of the American invasion is slowly surfacing in Washington. None of Bush's advisors expected the intensity of looting and fighting that has faced the Americans in Panama over the last five days. The state of chaos in Panama has prompted criticism from the Democratic chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, Congressman Les Aspen, a man who was quick to applaud Bush just a few days ago. I think that the fault lies that with the people making the decision with the president, advising the president. I do believe and it's not fatal here yet, but I do believe that there was not enough po emphasis on the political side. That's the weakness of this whole operation. And he had decided to make Panama uh, an important issue for him as a way of gaining credibility with conservatives in this country. This analyst says neither Bush nor his advisors appear to have contemplated the depth of change Panama would face or what it would look like to most other countries. We have resorted to a 19th or early 20th century gunboat diplomacy exactly at the time when President Gorbachev is thinking about the 21st century. U.S. officials acknowledge they now have a greater obligation to Panama. It needs a massive infusion of funds to help rebuild its economy and continued help to get its police force and its bureaucracy in working order. Anna Maria Tremonti, CBC News, Washington. And now to the other major story of the day, Romania. The last remnants of Romania's old guard are fighting on tonight. Bucharest, the country's capital city, is still at the mercy of security force snipers. They are the die-hard loyalist of Romania's former dictator, Nicolae Ceausescu. And they're holding out with savage determination against what now seems inevitable, victory for the forces of democracy. It has been very difficult for journalists to make their way to Bucharest. The CBC's Gillian Findlay is in Bulgaria tonight, on the border with Romania. Here is her report. Again today, Bucharest was a city under siege. There hasn't been fighting this intense in Europe since the Second World War. 
Democracy forces backed by the Romanian army are hunting down the ferocious Securitate police. They are the crack security team of ousted dictator Nicolae Ceausescu. The Securitate are badly outnumbered, but the army has been hard-pressed to dislodge them from key positions. That's because the Securitate are extremely well-armed and well-trained, not to mention desperate. As Ceausescu loyalists, they will almost certainly face rough justice in the new Romania. Atacuri asupra populației civile. It promised to punish Ceausescu and his supporters with the greatest severity. The daughter of the former dictator was shown on TV, but Ceausescu himself was not. Even though the army says he too has been arrested. The area around the state television headquarters was the scene of some of the heaviest fighting. Securitate attacked the building early today, killing three civilians before being driven out by pro-democracy forces. The death toll is now in the hundreds. Bodies are piling up in the basement of a Bucharest hospital, and a staggering number of wounded has simply overwhelmed medical workers. In Timisoara, pro-democracy forces are now in complete control. Securitate fighters are being rounded up and jailed, but as long as the battle for Bucharest rages on, Democracy will not yet have carried the day in Romania. Julian Finley, CBC News, Rouge, Bulgaria. As we said earlier, it is very difficult for foreigners to get to Bucharest. There are literally hundreds of checkpoints along every road leading to the capital. And at every one, people are stopped and searched. It is a dangerous trip. But tonight we spoke with a journalist who is in Bucharest, Russell Baker. And we asked him to describe the Romanian capital. Sure. Well, the most striking thing is, is how uh, the violence continues, yet we have no uh, idea exactly who uh, is causing it, and we also don't have a clear sense of how much control there is on the part of the so-called new authorities, uh, if you will, uh, against this type of thing. Um, people who have been shooting in any situations I've been in have been up and away in, inside or on top of buildings. It's an incredible scene. Uh, when I was over at uh, several of the Western embassies today, and the diplomats were describing to me uh, how they had, had driven out, and uh, in one case seen a, a man in a car go by and just start shooting at everyone in the crowd. They got him, they stopped the car, pulled him out, and beat him to death. It's, a, it's just a surreal situation. Russell, it also sounds like a very dangerous situation. Are civilians forced to stay inside their homes and other buildings, or, or can they venture outside at all? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been out uh, today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, the incredible thing you had to see it today was people were out strolling. Some of them were even shopping. Uh, stores were, were putting in new plate glass where the windows had either been shot out or, or smashed. Uh, and meanwhile, people, snipers were firing away uh, in, in the general vicinity. Canada has decided to give the Red Cross $100,000 for emergency medical supplies for Romania. The External Affairs Minister Joe Clark says the Red Cross has a proven record in providing emergency relief. Clark also says all Canadians in Romania are thought to be safe and the Canadian Embassy is still open in Bucharest. Pope John Paul says the bloodshed in Romania is the only sad and painful exception to a year of peaceful democratic change in Eastern Europe. He said it has been an extraordinary year because of how such momentous events took place in a peaceful way. The Pope spoke in an interview before celebrating Christmas Eve Midnight Mass at St. Peter's Basilica. The traditional mass took place at midnight for the world's 850 million Roman Catholics. The Pope's homily yeah, recounted the birth of Christ in Bethlehem. He wove his sermon around the biblical story of the angels telling the shepherds, I bring you good news of great joy. Fu proprio in un'ora notturna come questa alle moltitudini che ho incontrato in quei paesi, in Estremo Oriente, in Africa. Credo in unum Deu. During the Mass, prayers were said for the people and nations who are living with tension because of injustice. Tomorrow, the Pope will celebrate Christmas Day Mass in St. Peter's and deliver his twice-yearly blessing and message to the crowds in St. Peter's Square.
In Jerusalem, more than 500 worshipers were forced to leave a church where Desmond Tutu was leading a Christian midnight mass after a bomb threat. The South African Anglican Archbishop is paying a visit to the Holy Land. He had just finished his sermon when church leaders told the congregation to leave. Asked about the bomb threat, Tutu told reporters, we are living in that kind of world. Today, East Germans decked the wall with boughs of holly as they threw a Christmas party for the West. Thousands of West Germans streamed over the border to take advantage of relaxed travel and exchange restrictions. And the East Germans welcomed them with champagne, fireworks, and brass bands. Jean-Francois Lapine reports. For the first time since the borders started opening up between the two Germanies a few months ago, it was the turn of the West Germans today to be greeted in the East. For Klaus Richter, an East Berliner, it was another reason to celebrate. Klaus spent his 50th birthday anniversary at the Brandenburg Gate, offering free beer to the crowds. This morning, thousands of people in West Berlin took advantage of the easier crossing regulations. At the checkpoints along the wall, they discovered something that was impossible only a few months ago. No more cross-examinations, no fees, no visas, just a stamp in the passport and a small token form to fill out. I feel very happy because I came from Berlin, from East Berlin, but I left East Berlin before they built up the wall, 1961, so I'm the first day again in East Berlin. 28 years, it was impossible to come here and now it is really possible. Never before since the Second World War had so many people poured into East Berlin at the same time. Parents with children, old couples in search of memories, foreigners looking for adventure. And never before had the East German security forces been so relaxed. What will you do today? Oh, just looking around the dome. And